Okay, hello guys. Take two. Couldn't hear me on the last one because I'd covered up the microphone. So, right, as promised, I'm going to do a precipitation test, um, which will highlight the differences between your tap water and purified water. Okay, so first of all, we have two vessels here one for tap water, one for pure water. So, tap water first, tap water, fill it up. Lid on, shake it, empty out, filled again. Okay, that's to ensure that there's no cross contamination and you know that there's nothing untoward in the bottle already. Same thing again, what we need to do, disconnect that and connect this. Now this is our water filter, I will explain exactly what it is in a sec. Same tap water, just filtering through this. Same thing again. Put a bit of water in there, fill it up, shake it. And there we go, to make sure there's no cross contamination again. Now, to perform the precip test, what we have to do is we have to add two chemicals to it. The first one being quinoline. Quinoline, I'm sure many of you have heard of, is um, used as a food dye normally nowadays. Um, it's still in malaria tablets. It was used as a, a medicinal um, substance many years ago, um, but basically widespread used as a food dye nowadays. And in this instance, this is what it's going to do. It's going to dye all the water and all the impurities in there. So we're going to put three pipettes of each in this. One, two, three. One, two, three. And then the second chemical that we need to add is potassium hydroxide. Potassium hydroxide is basically a bleach and a bonding agent. The bonding agent will act around the impurities, coat itself around the impurities, and we'll be able to see if there's anything in the water. So three pipettes of each again. One. Two, three, one, two, three. Okay, now what we need to do is help them on their way. As you can see, they're starting to settle. There's a bit of a difference already. So let's take the purified water. We can see that it's sort of reacting. It's trying to find things to bond onto and latch onto. Let's give that a bit of a helping hand. And then we see, if there's nothing in your water, and the water will revert back to clear, or the, the dye in there. Now let's take tap water. Now, this is tap water from rural Oxfordshire. And then we see massive difference. So let's give this a bit of a shake as well. There we go. That's your tap water. I will get into a little bit more detail with that as we go on. But first I'd like to show you just how much your water is costing you as well as costing you on your health, but it's costing you in your wallet as well. Now, I need to take another two samples, purified and tap water. Let's take the purified water again. Again, we wash out. to this, these two samples, is soap, basically normal soap surfactant. This is a pure soap found in all of your detergents and washing powders and washing liquids and things like that. The only thing is there's only around about 3-5% to 5 of actual soap in any of these products. The rest of it is perfumes, fragrances, fillers, enzymes, packers, you name it. Now, what I'm going to do is add three drops of this soap to each of these samples. So, 
Hopefully you can see the drops going in. One, two, three. One, two, three. Okay. Let's just give them a little bit of a shake. Flocculation, basically. Simulating the effects of a washing machine. And there we go. I'm sure you're all speaking about the differences that you can see here, but basically what we see is three drops of soap in each of these samples. One of them is raw tap water and one of them is purified water. Purified water, the main difference is, as you can see, is it still retained its soap suds on the top there. It's got clear water as well. The water is clear and the soap's on the top, which means the soap is not bonding to anything. In the tap water, however, it literally just looks like dirty dishwater. There's no soap suds to speak of, and it is like a grey, murky kind of colour. That's what the majority of you are washing your clothes in, especially in hard water areas. Obviously hard water, soft water varies around the country, around the world, but it's still got these chemicals in there as well. So hard water, soft water. Soft water is ultimately a little bit better, but purified water cannot be beaten. Now, the implications of this are huge. Basically, you're washing your clothes in dirty water already. The soap's not doing its job because it's bonding itself to all of the impurities in the water already. It's trying to clean the water, basically, which is what it's designed to do. Now, it's going to be costing you a hell of a lot more. I'm sure many of you have had experience in both hard and soft water. If you live in a hard water area, you've probably gone to Wales or Scotland or the north of England and experience soft water. You'll use far too much soap, far too much product, and everything feels silky, and it feels like you can't wash it off compared. Now, it's not necessarily a bad thing. What's happening there is your skin's natural oils are coming to the surface. Also as well, with you using a lot less, it will cost you a lot less. So, I'm gonna show you just how much more you can put into this tap water here to try and get the same result as this. Okay, so I'm going to put another 30 drops of soap in there. Okay, ready? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty. Twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four, twenty-five, twenty-six, twenty-seven, twenty-eight, twenty-nine, thirty. 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30. Okay, let's see if that makes any difference. Looking promising. However, after a few seconds, the soap suds die down. They look scummy. I don't know if you can see that at all, but basically all you've got is dirtier water, if you like, cloudier water, and scum type soap suds. Definitely not the nice, clean, fluffy soap suds that you see here. Now again, there's three drops of soap in this one, and there's 33 drops of soap in this one. And I'd still rather wash my clothes in here. Okay, so your tap water is costing you a fortune. It's costing you more in your heating bills. It's costing you more with uh, cleaning products and things like that. Uh, lime scale remover. If you had no lime scale in your water, you wouldn't need to buy a lime scale remover. Also, all of the extra products that you're using just to get a desired result not only with your clothes, but with your body as well. Now, let's go back to this. There is your tap water as it's settling. Not very nice. So, the filter in itself, the filter that I've got here is basically just a mobile filter unit um, for demonstration purposes only. We happen to use it for drinking water and cooking. Um, we use it for cleaning purposes as well, um, but you can and ultimately should buy a whole house purification system. Um, if you go to a company, they're normally around about three to five thousand pounds, professionally fitted with some sort of support guarantee with it as well. Or if you have a moderate sort of understanding of DIY, you can buy one first hand from the internet. Um, you can probably get one for around about eight, nine hundred pounds nowadays. About five years ago, they were about six hundred. 
uh, you can fit it yourself if you kind of know what you're doing. If not, get a plumber in and it will cost you around about £200 to have it fitted. Simple, all you have to do is splice it into your water feed from the point where it comes into your house, just after your stock top. You splice into your filter and then you come back into your system. So all of your water in your house is basically purified. So it cleans out all the lime scale, it makes your boiler work more efficiently, it makes all your radiators work more efficiently, it makes your water boil easier and quicker, your kettle boils easier and quicker and quieter. Uh, it increases the life of everything. And also as well, when you're washing, when you're cooking and cleaning and doing everything with purified water, everything looks cleaner because it doesn't scratch any of the surfaces and it costs you a lot less. There's a lot less products that you have to buy in regards to purified water as you do to deal with tap water. So it can cost you an absolute fortune. More importantly though, this stuff. This stuff, when you're drinking it, at the top here will have lighter components and elements. In the middle will have sort of like an organic suspension. And at the bottom, the heavier elements. And it will settle a little bit more in time anyway. But all of this is in every single sample of tap water. Varying degrees of disgustingness, if you like. But in there, you are finding fluoride. You're finding chlorine. Chlorine is a bleach and you're drinking bleach. You'll also find lead, cadmium, mercury, um, there's a few chemicals and components in there that um, in the industry they call the tries and dyes. Uh, they're horrifically long scientific names but tries and dyes basically is how they all start. Um, what they are are colorants and um, flavor enhancers. Basically flavor enhancers so it tastes like water and not swimming pools and the color enhancer so it doesn't look brown. The level of contamination in your tap water is shocking. A water industry that tells you that there is a safe level of lead that you can consume is lying to you. There is no safe level of lead and yet lead is proven to be found in all of your tap water. There's all sorts of other stuff in there, not to mention medication as well. Now, medication that we have, um, we are taking much more medication nowadays than we have ever done. Oestrogen, HRT, um, contraceptive pills, antidepressants, painkillers. Now, a lot of the reason why these are losing their potency, if you like, is because they are not filtered out at source from your tap water and everybody is ingesting certain levels of medication that they don't need, have not been prescribed for and could have a serious effect on them. Now you've all seen, I'm sure, and maybe some of you are affected by it as well, um, but man boobs, moobs, whatever you want to call them, yeah. that's basically uh, a product of drinking oestrogen through your tap water. There are so many people prescribed with hormone replacement therapy. The most common is oestrogen. Now, if the male population drink so much oestrogen that it's changing their bodies, something's got to give. Also as well, all your fishermen out there, and if you know any fishermen, ask them about the sex of fish changing from male to female, or they're becoming hermaphrodite. This has been a problem, an ongoing problem, for many, many years in the water systems around Britain. And it's due to unfiltered, not fit for purpose tap water. Now you've seen the difference, you can make your own decisions. Feel free to comment, but also feel free to share. As many people as possible need to see this. Your tap water, basically, is not good for you. Okay, thanks for watching. See ya.